Senator West, thank you for your time. Your reaction to being in the runoff? Well, I, I'm, I, I thank the voters uh, in the state of Texas. You got to remember now, I just got in this in July. Texas is a large state. Didn't get a chance to cover it, all of the state, but I look forward to covering it before the end of November, before November gets here. Uh, you won Dallas, you won Tarrant Counties, uh, you won Ellis and Kaufman and Navarro, uh, but you came in second in Collin and Denton and some of the other counties in our area. I mean, that's, I have work to do. I was just going to ask you, do you need to shore up the home turf? Well, I think uh, I need to shore up more than just the home turf. I've got to shore up some other areas in Texas also. But you, you've got to recognize that in some of those areas we have a lot of new voters, if you will that don't know uh, what I have done as a, a state senator. So I've got to make sure I take that case to them. And uh, with the necessary resources, we'll be able to do that. What is your message to Democrats in the runoff and why they should go for you instead of M.J. Hager? Well, I, my, message, my message about why I'm asking them to support me is because if you want someone at the top of the ticket that will energize the base, if the base is not energized, we can forget November. I'm the person that can energize the base. And as far as the issues, what do you think the issues are in this runoff campaign that are, that are really driving it? Well, I, I think the issues are still the same. My issues, my focus will be the same things I talked about during the uh, original primary race, uh, health care, uh, <clears throat> women's rights, um, uh, issues concerning minimum wages, uh, the issues concerning climate change, those types of issues, I'll still talk about those. How will you attract Hispanic voters to your campaign? Well, uh, let me, can we have another interview next week? Yeah, wait until next week. You'll see. Oh, it sounds like, is it an endorsement coming? Wait until next week. You'll see. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you, um, because I saw you and uh, MJ on their um, on your Twitter feeds, we're congratulating and thanking the other candidates for running sure. their campaign. Yes. And I'm wondering, are you asking the other candidates who didn't make it to the runoff uh, to endorse your campaign? Sure, my last time to endorse my campaign. And uh, any yet? Any takers yet? Wait until next week. Okay. All right. So the other thing I wanted to ask you is runoff elections can be tricky, as you know. Correct. Because while it's easier for voters to focus on two candidates as opposed to the 12 that you had originally. That's exactly right. Um, what's more challenging for you is engaging the voters because it's election day is right after Memorial Day. People are starting to think about the summer. School is going to let out. So what is your strategy to make sure your supporters get to the polls? Well, I, I think that what you saw during the primary, you saw a, a, a surge in Democratic voters, even though it was a, a little bit less than Republican voters from, about, I think, about 2012. You saw a huge surge. You, surge. you saw lines of people voting in the Democratic primary. People are incensed in terms of what this president has done to this country. And Corning, following along with him, not up, holding up his oath of office as it relates to a whole I a list of issues. I don't think that it's going to take a lot to energize people for the fall election. We've got to make certain we keep that front of mind to voters, and we've got to make certain that they understand the importance of this particular runoff. We've got to make certain we have someone that's at the top of our ticket that can energize the base, pull together a coalition of all people, and I'm that person. Why do you think so? Why do I think what? That you are that person. I mean, look at my history. You'll see that. Uh, if you look at my history, you'll see that I have played that particular role. Look at Dallas County. When Dallas County initially was a Republican back in 2006, who was one of the leaders that brought together blacks, whites, browns, all the Democrats in order to put together a coalition in order to get turn uh, Dallas blue? It was me. And I can, I'll can i still do the same thing. In, in the Texas legislature, in some of the toughest battles that we've had in terms of legislation that we needed to have passed, I was able to pull together coalitions of Democrats and Republicans in order to get things done. I think I've readied myself, if you will, with the experiences that I've had thus far in my uh, public service career to be the uh, nominee for the Democratic Party. And uh, you, you mentioned Senator Cornyn. What are some of the issues that you feel as if he hasn't held up his oath of the office? Well, I think, the, I think that the impeachment vote, he's a jurist, 
He's a lawyer. I've never seen a trial without evidence. And of all the people in the world that should know that, John Corning should know that. Now, whether they vote one way or the other, that's altogether some difference. But it was a, uh, I think that he engaged, in a, he engaged with other Republicans in a mockery of, uh, of uh, what we would call, quote, unquote, a trial. That was not a trial at all. So he didn't hold, uphold his oath of office to uh, render a verdict based on the evidence. I guess he did. Huh? He, he, didn't, he didn't even hear the evidence. Uh, those types of things that, uh, make me disappointed in the John Corning that I've known all of these years. And hopefully he doesn't come out with all this stuff about democratic socialism, taking the same lines as uh, uh, Trump. The fact is, is that Corning has known me for uh, ever since he was a, an attorney general or a justice on the Supreme Court. And he knows that when he asked me to assist him in uh, legislation, he didn't consider me a liberal or radical at that time. He considered me a Texan that would make certain that I would get things done that was in the best interest of Texas. And I'll do the same thing as the U.S. Senate. And so does that mean you're, uh, you're not, you wouldn't consider yourself a progressive? Or, you consider yourself let, a let, moderate? Let, or? Let, let, let me tell you what box you can put me in, okay? I am, I'm, a, I'm, I'm center left on issues. That's where I am. And so uh, as far as I know, one thing that we heard from uh, Joe Biden the other day he called himself an Obama Democrat, an Obama Biden, you know, Democrat. Uh, are you in that line? Uh, let me say what I am again. I am a center left Democrat. That's who I am. And uh, so one thing that you said in a statement yesterday is now that you're in a runoff, it's a new ball game. It's, an, it's a new ball game altogether. Exactly. And, and so what does that mean as it relates to you've got two months, right, to, to have your election? Terrible. That's exactly right. So do you start from you? you no, build. you don't start. You don't start from the beginning. No, but you build you on build, what you have. You build right? on what you have right now, and that's exactly what we'll do. Uh, there's there's a lot of opportunity out here in terms of uh, convincing people to be supportive of my campaign, and, and that's exactly what we'll do. We'll convince them to be able to do that. Um, you begin to look at the number of uh, of uh, votes that were other candidates ended up getting in this race. It'd be interesting to see exactly how many of them I can get to be supportive of me and then encourage those persons that voted for them to vote for me. So there, there's a lot of opportunity out here to get additional voters. Royce West, thank you so much. Hopefully you'll make Royce your choice.